welcome to the launch of this new report coming out of Bangladesh, uh, which is a brief on the AIIB's investment in the country. It's called Financing Fossil Fuels, Failing Our Future. Um, the co-organizers of this launch are naturally the authors of the report, which is Clean uh, Bangladesh, Coastal Livelihood and Environmental Action Network, um, Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt, BWGD, uh, NGO Forum on ABB, Recourse, and Orgevor. Um, I'm the um, coordinator of Growth Watch and the president of INSAF, the Indian Social Action Forum, and it's a pleasure to have you all here. Uh, the AIIB has been, since 2016, hailed as the Clean Green Bank, the new kid on the block. And uh, let's see whether that kid from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, I'll go directly to Sajad Hussain Suhim, who is the research coordinator of Clean Coastal Livelihood and Environmental Action Network, based in Kulna. Um, Suhim, you are to welcome all of us um, uh, formally. Thank you so much, Vinda. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, and uh, this is something like uh, we have another bank. Uh, who are claiming themselves as environment and people friendly, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, in short, AIIB. It has a vital hold uh, in the Bangladesh energy sector. After its establishment in 2015, Bangladesh is uh, one of its uh, early lender of energy investment. Its very first investment in Bangladesh was came in a private sector power projects in Vola uh, of uh, 60 million US dollar loan approved in 2018. After uh, three consecutive years, still now the communities of Vola are finding the way to compensate their losses due to unjust land acquisition and canal grabbing by the operator company, Notun Bidud Bangladesh Limited, uh, in short, NBBL, which is a subsidiary of Indian infrastructure giant, Shapurji Palanji Infrastructure Capital Company Limited. However, Clean and uh, Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt is watching the investment of uh, AIIB since 2016, just after its uh, initialization of uh, actively watching its several projects in Bangladesh starting from uh, 2018, just after the investment of Bhola IPP. Uh, to this day, uh, the overall investment of uh, AIIB in Bangladesh has crossed over uh, 2.3 billion US dollar in 2021. Uh, and uh, it has been started from 165 million US dollar in 2016. So the rising rate uh, was like 32% uh, per year. Even in the global pandemic situation, AIB loans are entrapping the people of Bangladesh and our economy with a huge debt burden in the name of post pandemic recovery. So far, AIB has invested uh, 605 million US dollar in the energy sector of Bangladesh with an increasing rate of 23% each year, which is a huge amount. Uh, it has been the second largest sector for AIB investment in Bangladesh, just after the transport sector loan of uh, 667 million US dollar. In total, AIB have invested uh, 13 large projects in Bangladesh so far, and seven are waiting at their table uh, for approval. In, a, in spite of this level of financing, significantly AIB has yet to invest in any renewable projects in Bangladesh, which is exposing the bank as an influential financer directly undermining the global effort of uh, protecting climate and uh, community resilience. So the inhabitants of AIB funded projects uh, sites are fighting a serious damage of their local environment, compensation, information disclosure, prior consultation, and so on. But those are the elementary pillars of any people-oriented projects. So 
in this study, uh, it's a small glimpse of how the operation of AIB investment have been through in last five years in Bangladesh and how it could be in future. Uh, our, uh, this small initiative will be valued to you all and uh, it will help us to make this bank more accountable and people oriented. So uh, I'm welcoming everyone to this uh, discussion and this program as well. Uh, so thank you everyone for being here and for being with us. So over to you. Dave. Thanks. Thanks to him. Thanks for the formal welcome. And uh, we all do think that this uh, report will be very important considering the AIIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is actually going into its annual meeting this year. Um, uh, most of us cannot be there to pressurize the bank and it, it's uh, reports like this that will help everyone um, show the mirror to the bank. I'll now call upon uh, the Executive Director of CLEAN, Hassan Mahadeen. He's also the Member Secretary of the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt. To tell us more, Mahadeen has shared the report in the chat. So I'm sure all of you are already reading it, but Mehdi, you can make a short presentation and also tell us um, what compelled you to bring out this report. I know that landowners and middle leaf uh, farmers are still agitating against the AIIB um, a project that first sort of broke on the scene. Tell us more. Uh, thank you very much, Vidya. Um, already, uh, my colleague Tuhin focused a little about uh, the footprint of AD, AIB in Bangladesh. I'm just uh, trying to share a small presentation on the whole report, which can give you a, a idea. Uh, thank you very much. The headline of the report is Financing Fossil Fuels Failing Our Future. The track record of uh, AIB in Bangladesh uh, since 2016, 2000, 2021, August 10. Uh, so, so here you can see the uh, investment track of AIB uh, in Bangladesh, uh, which started in 2016 by uh, $120 million, and now it is to uh, 2,306 million dollar uh, in five years. And uh, for comparison, I can tell you that uh, ADB took 12 years to get here at this level. And uh, after 17 years of investment, World Bank uh, risked that amount uh, of investment. So, uh, and if you uh, consider the proposed projects which are going to be uh, approved by fourth uh, quarter of 2021, it will reach around uh, $3 billion in this year. So that is the, uh, and that is 3% of total uh, loan of Bangladesh. Uh, so in, in five year, in, within five year, AIB took 3% of total loan, historical loan of Bangladesh. Uh, so uh, you can, you can uh, understand the uh, trend where it is going. So uh, the project areas are here. Uh, so most uh, of the projects are in Dhaka and some of second, uh, some national projects. And then Bhola, uh, Bhola is uh, coastal zone. Uh, third, uh, in Chattogram, there are two projects. In Jinada, one project. In Maimanshing, there is Kavad Khali uh, Bridge project, which you can say that it's a textbook example of, uh, uh, of expand, exp uh, of you know, giving loan without any cause. They are trying to make a uh, breeze, uh, which is uh, like uh, Sydney Opera House in an area which is moment thing in central, central Bangladesh, where there is no tourists, and they are trying to make a uh, you know art breeze there. Uh, so Silet Silet to Tamabil Road, which is uh, under the Asian Highway, and uh, it has serious lack of uh, consultation and also uh, the gender violence there. So that is the uh, you know overall picture. So the, if you see the sectors, uh, energy is the second highest sector now. But if the other projects like two projects in the table, 
uh, uh, which is going to be approved by fourth uh, quarter, then uh, the energy will be the highest sector uh, where ADB, AIB is financing. Second sector is transport with uh, $1 billion. Third is the financial sector like banks and the financial market. Uh, and then health, health especially come, uh, has come uh, to table uh, after the pandemic. Uh, so, th and the last biggest sector is the water, sun, water and sanitation. So, if you see the uh, uh, sector, subsector of the energy, then you can see here uh, power transmission and distribution uh, get the highest uh, amount, 80.2%, uh, 485 million. Then the uh, Bola power plant, which is 60 million, and uh, oil and gas transmission uh, got another 60 million. Uh, dollar so with, uh, there is no investment in renewables there is no investment in in uh, clean energy there is no investment in uh, any type of uh, green transition so uh, uh, 48 percent of total uh, investment from aib is co-financed and uh, the major co-finance share are ADB and World Bank and then Bangladesh government and very minor uh, co-financer is ITCOL, uh, Infrastructure Development Company Limited, Bangladesh, and also the ISDB, Islamic Development Bank. Uh, but problem is uh, when it is co-financed, even uh, when it uh, AIB is financing more than the co-financiers, AIB took shelter under the uh, behind the big brothers like ADB and World Bank, they are using the safeguard policies of, uh, of, of ADB and World Bank, even when ADB or World Bank's investment is lower, uh, uh, you know, less than the uh, than AIB. So this is the Bola IPP. Uh, so uh, it started in 2018. Uh, they took permission uh, of, if you can see on the left side, the big uh, circle. Uh, they took permission of uh, you know 0 0.28 acres of land uh, from the river for uh, developing a jetty but they made three jetties after uh, after getting that permission and uh, uh, on the you know if you see the upside that there are two circles uh, they grabbed a canal in that area and uh, the local people's land uh, the people are still waiting for the compensation for the land uh, and it's three years and now the the Bola IPP is already in operation. Uh, even then, they didn't pay. They haven't paid that uh, uh, compensation for the people. Uh, so uh, they they made some uh, pipes, like uh, like one pipe you can see there, uh, and uh, sands and debris from the construction site uh, discharged in the canal uh, through that pipe. Uh, so the small canal, uh, which is used by the local uh, communities for uh, washing, bathing, and uh, and uh, daily household use, uh, uh, that that filled up, and uh, then we raised voice from NGO Forum and ADB, Bangladesh Working Group, and external debt, Urge World, and Recourse. We raised our voice, and uh, then they promised that they will reactivate the canal. And what they did is actually uh, the beautification of the canal, not the re-excavation. And that is why uh, after the re-excavation, the water level is here. Uh, the, the, the woman, he can uh, just walk through the canal uh, to, from one, side, one part to another part. And uh, now we're still uh, today, after three uh, years of implementation, uh, the people are experiencing water logging and the better leaf farmers uh, uh, like pan farmers, uh, uh, they are experiencing, uh, you know, damage of crops every year. So now what has happened, this AIB, uh, ITCOL and the Islamic Development Bank, they supported Shapurji Palanji Group to establish Notun Bidud Bangladesh Limited, NBBL in, Bang in Bangladesh, to establish that uh, power plant. And now Shapurji Palanji uh, already sold the uh, uh, the company, the power plant to Actis Energy in United Kingdom and Actis Embargan 2 in uh, Mauritius. Uh, so they are taking money from uh, under under MIGA, uh, which is World Bank uh, 
uh, wing of World Bank, multilateral investment guarantee agency, and they are going to take uh, take over the uh, power plant. So, so people do not know what will be happen to them uh, because uh, we wrote to uh, AIB from NGO Forum and ADB, uh, but they didn't reply that what will be happen and what is going to happen uh, in the on the ground and uh, what is the future of the people. So that is the situation now here. So another project is uh, uh, power system upgradation and uh, expansion project, which is uh, in Chittagong. In the map, you can see that uh, there are other uh, two projects, uh, one financed by JICA, which is Matarbari, uh, Madunagat, Meghnagat, 400 KV transmission line, which, which connects uh, the Matarbari coal power plant, the controversial uh, JICA funded Matarbari coal power plant to the, to the national grid uh, to Dhaka. Uh, and another project, uh, government uh, is uh, commissioning the project, uh, which is Matarbari Bashkali Madunaghat uh, 400 KB transmission line, which connects the Bashkali coal power plant, uh, another notorious coal power plant financed by the, uh, the Chinese uh, Exim Bank, uh, Chinese uh, what's called Bank of China, uh, and SEPCO 3. So AIB is actually financing a uh, small line 230 kv double circuit underground transmission line to madunaga to kulshi which is actually uh, you know connecting the dots of uh, the other two uh, transmission line but but aib is saying it's it's for you know uh, for uh, promoting that the distribution system but it's transmission line and it's uh, high voltage transmission line so uh, before uh, constructing the uh, transmission line, they conducted a consultation meeting uh, in which they covered 0.003% of the beneficiary. Uh, the beneficiaries are 237,000 people and they, uh, they uh, invited 97 persons in the consultation meetings. Uh, so, and in that consultation meetings, 55% uh, are local government institution from the uh, elected, uh, you know, uh, chairman and members, and uh, uh, only 30% are project affected people, and other 15% are, are uh, administrative representatives. And they amalgamated the whole things, the big, uh, like uh, administrative persons and local government people with the uh, affected communities. So finally, what happened? The affected communities cannot uh, could not raise their points because uh, there are uh, power dynamics uh, in in the localities. <coughs> they translated the uh, the uh, resettlement plan in uh, in in a language which uh, the Bangladeshi uh, audience are here. Uh, you you can try to read that. Uh, it is a non-existing language, uh, and uh, they are saying that. Uh, they translated in local languages. Uh, the land price uh, they estimated is uh, really below half of the actual price. They said that the, the transmission line and the uh, substations will be established on barren land, but they used the photo of the land, which clearly mentioned that there are uh, two row of uh, vegetables uh, on the land. We can see from the uh, ESI, their, uh, their USI report. So what are the demands now? Uh, we are focusing that this, that is the uh, very basic things are, uh, are uh, AIB should disclose all the documents at least before 120 days of approval. Uh, AIB should disclose all uh, the documents of even non-sovereign project documents uh, and, sh and should ensure the all information in local language. AIB should just now stop investing any fossil fuel and fossil fuel supporting infrastructures in Bangladesh and uh, to support uh, Bangladesh uh, to achieve 100% renewables. Uh, AIB should focus on distributed and decentralized utility scale uh, 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 renewable projects. Uh, a methodology should be there to, to assess how much 
uh, you know, carbon uh, is going to be emit, uh, emitted by uh, transmission distribution systems. Before transferring for the Bola IPP formally, AIB should resolve the allegation of uncompensated land appropriation by the uh, company. Uh, the better leaf farmers should be compensated uh, for last three years. They, they haven't compensated anything till now. Uh, the pipeline should be dis discharged. They committed several times, but they didn't follow that. Uh, the mandatory shaka kale uh, should be reactivated regu regularly so that uh, the, the people uh, will be free from water logging. Uh, the Chittagong people uh, of the power system upgradation project, they have right to get adequate compensation. The right of way, they are taking the land uh, for a long term. They should be uh, compensated on an annual basis, not one time, because because they will be affected every year. They will not get any crop from the land uh, for a long time. Uh, and there should be a cumulative impact assessment uh, of different power plants and transmission line in Chattogram zone. Uh, that is uh, all from uh, uh, my side. And you can download the report from uh, here. I, I'm going to share this report, this uh, presentation with you. And uh, there is a link uh, in, the, in the chat box also. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehdi, not just for that presentation, but also for pushing and seeing that this report came out just in time. Um, our next speaker will, I think, tell us more. Uh, Ryan Hassan is executive director of the NGO Forum on EPP. Ryan, they've been ignoring renewables. They've been hiding behind the safeguard policies of other NDBs uh, because they're co-financing all the time. The AIIB has been really paving the way for the private sector and greater privatization in the energy sector of Bangladesh. And they've left affected communities high and dry. They came uh, six years ago. You've been watching the bank since then. This is a bank in a tearing hurry with a large appetite. It is, yet it's very lean. But how clean and green? Tell us. Uh, thank you, Vidya. Well, you know, um, all of us have had our engagements with AIB in some form or another over the last six years. And uh, obviously, it is not like the Asian Development Bank. Its very DNA is very recent. It's from the Chinese overseas expansion, the Belt Road Initiative. Uh, it is China's multilateral uh, development bank arm alongside with the BRICS. So understanding that geopolitical difference between ADB and AIB was absolutely critical for NGO Forum because that changes the way you engage the AIB and your expectations should be different, honestly. So uh, many of us have been monitoring uh, Chinese financed uh, infrastructure projects and connectivity and energy projects. And those who have done that work realize how opaque um, uh, Chinese financial institutions are and how difficult it is to talk about uh, environmental and social issues and accountability issues. So that's not much different at the AIB. Um, so I guess bringing the conversation back down to the Bangladesh uh, context, um, I think it needs to be mentioned the effort of CLEAN, the effort of the Bangladesh Working Group um, dating back to 2018, um, they were engaging AIB before even policies were set at the AIB. So I remember um, the AIB management officials came to discuss the information disclosure policy in Bangladesh in 2018, which the forum and the Bangladesh Working Group co-organized these consultations. Uh, you were a part of it too, Vidya. Um, we had meetings with DG Laurel on how information will be released by the bank versus how it will be released by the project developer. Uh, we looked at the nitty gritties of the complaint mechanism. So, you know, today there is an information disclosure policy in the PPI. There is an accountability mechanism in the PPM, uh, Project Affected People's Mechanism. So a lot of, the, a lot of that work, civil society organizing, 
had a very significant role for Clean and Bangladesh Working Group uh, to bring that into fruition along with the wider civil society community of NGO Forum on ADP and beyond. Many of us worked into it. So um, I'm, I'm really thrilled uh, to hear from Tuhin and Mehdibai's presentation over the exhaustive list of projects. It's worrisome, both India and Bangladesh are now the donor darlings of the AIIB, uh, massive portfolios. Um, as Mehdibai mentioned, you know, the projects such as the Kewat Khali Bridge, uh, the potential impacts of that are going to be huge. The debt burden is going to be very significant on the Bangladesh government. Uh, so the choice and selection of infrastructure projects is equally important uh, and should be on the radar for civil society, along with the specific projects and their impacts as well. Because I think the cumulative financial burden which the government is going to face um, in the journey through this pandemic because of large scale infrastructure is going to be something very telling, right? So the question is not only how many people will be displaced, but do we really need that particular project? Uh, now, how do we influence that decision-making? Uh, that is where I think a lot of work needs to be done. Uh, AIB remains opaque, annual meetings still remain closed. So um, just to, just to uh, flag to you a few improvements in terms of communication recently, the CEIU, the Compliance Effectivity Integrity Unit, which hosts the accountability mechanism, has agreed to do an outreach specifically for Bangladesh because there is such a big portfolio of AIB lending here. Uh, I will definitely lean on Bangladesh Working Group and Clean to organize these outreach consultations. Um, there's also the upcoming annual meeting and we are doing a shadow press conference uh, around all the issues which cannot be talked about. And um, looking forward, you have the energy sector strategy coming out from the AIB. They will review their energy sector strategy. That's also another place where we will all be engaging towards a potential just transition to renewables away from fossil fuel finance. So um, yeah, great work done so far. A um, lot of resistance and coordination done, a uh, lot of work ahead. So I wish everyone all the best and looking forward to engage with you all. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan Hassan of the NGO Forum on ADB. Um, very important work done, as Ryan said, and now we have a report that can um, center stage this even more. Um, I call upon our next speaker, Dr. Nora Sospikar, uh, heads the China Desk and uh, campaigns on multilateral development bank that Orgewald in Germany um, uh, does. So, um, Nora, we've, uh, we've heard it from Bangladesh, from the ground up, from clean. We've heard the NGO Forum, which is a regional player. You are the expert on Chinese financial institutions, the geopolitics. Can we zoom out and hear from you what your understanding is of the AIIB in Bangladesh? Thank you, Vidya. Yes, uh, first of all, let me thank you um, very much, uh, Bangladesh Working Group on External Deaths and all the authors uh, who put so much effort in this really fantastic report, which is really timely. And we are happy to support that. Um, as already mentioned by previous speakers, uh, I think we have to see really the, this new bank, the AIIB, and its Bangladesh engagement as part of the broader story for infrastructure investment in the framework of BRI, so the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, we at Urgewald monitor these developments, as you mentioned from the very beginning in 2016. And um, as we learned from the report, Bangladesh is one of the core countries uh, to invest in by the bank. Um, and we think it must be absolutely clear that the one who gives money I think we lost Nora for a minute, but she'll be back. For 
Yes, Nora, we lost you for a minute, but you're back now. Continue. Oh, it's very instable. I'm in the woods here. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm just repeating that Germany, as the biggest uh, non-regional shareholder of the bank, is especially responsible for safeguards, social and uh, environmental safeguards, as well as human rights, um, transparency, information disclosure, as well as climate protection. The Constitutional Court in Germany, just this year, on 24th of March, um, resolved the order that Germany is also in, compelled to engage in internationally oriented activities to tackle climate change at the global level. So Bangladesh belongs to the ex exceptional vulnerable states to climate change. And because of the country's natural susceptibility to extreme weather, the people of Bangladesh have always used migration as a coping strategy. But now under the conditions uh, of intensified climate change, more people are driven uh, from their homes and land more frequently. So have the sea level rise, storms, cyclones, and so on. It has been estimated that by 2050, one in every seven people in Bangladesh will be displaced by climate change. Institution as, as the AIRB, who justify building fossil power plants in such a country like Bangladesh, such as Bola IPP or building transmission lines which support coal power plants, bear no responsibility. Also, as we have uh, seen in the amended ESF this year, uh, there, uh, the, the AIB is far from using best practices. As mentioned before, um, the, um, the obligation as, for example, written down in the Pelosi amendment to um, publish uh, the environmental impact assessment at least 120 days before approval is not practiced by AIB. The AIB had no deadlines for disclosure for over six years now. Now they have, but they are far from good. They are just merely a minimum standard, we would say. Um, so also, as we have heard, the people's rights have been ignored by land grabbing, missing compensation and so forth. So we as NGOs from Global North feel really responsible and the shareholders should do too. So we expect that this bank um, could be a forerunner and not a laggard. So there are many other deficiencies. I think uh, all my colleagues from other uh, NGOs uh, will elaborate more on that. I leave it by that. Thank you very much and very much looking forward on the effects of this great report. Thanks. Thanks, Nora, thanks. So yes, please do um, uh, circulate this report uh, called Financing Fossil Fuels Failing Our Future. Amra um, Akhun, last speaker at Kachwe Jabo. So I call upon Petra Shell, campaign manager of Recourse um, based in the United Kingdom to, um, uh, to give us her perspective and Recourse's perspective. Petra has actually gone to the Bhola site, haven't you, Petra? And, uh, and you've been also looking, the group has been looking at FIs and uh, financial intermediaries and how the AIIB uses this route. So if you could tell us more, Petra, where are you? Can you, you see me? Yes, you see me? Me? finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Petra. Hi, Vidya. Thank you, Vidya. And, and thanks, everyone, for joining. And obviously, big, big thanks to um, to Heen and Mehedi, who outlined the report so um, succinctly and, and powerfully. And um, obviously, Ryan and Nora as well for coming in before me. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots of other people behind the scenes who've been making this happen, including the report. Um, so as Rico, we're very honoured to be part of this collaboration. Um, and I actually wanted to go back a few steps to, to where we were two years ago. Um, as Ryan mentioned, CLEAN and the Bangladeshi Working Group on External Debt really came in early on and started challenging what the AIB was doing. I, I think 
before many of us had really understood what the impact of the projects were. Um, and one of when we started our collaboration with CLEAN more directly was two years ago when we um, produced another report which mapped AIB's um, portfolio in in Bangladesh uh, called Dangerous Distractions, uh, really relying on the research they'd already done on the ground. We worked together to publish that. Um, and that report showed, like this report, that despite Bangladesh being a very climate vulnerable country, um, AIB had not invested anything in, in the transition to cleaner, um, um, low carbon society. There was no renewable energy in the portfolio. Um, so for me, when um, Clean and Bangladeshi Working Group on External Death decided to, to look into the portfolio again, it's really disappointing to see that nothing's really changed. The portfolio may be a little bit more diverse. It's not just energy as it was at that point. Um, but, but some of the, the fears we had originally in, in that report and previously have just become worse. Um, so ball I, we've already um, talked about extensively, um, and that's a place I did visit, and it was really interesting to see um, directly and speak to the communities there. Um, but another project that Mehedi highlighted in the report was the power system upgrade project in Chattergram. And at that time, we thought there could maybe be links to coal, but we didn't spell it out. And it's really disappointing now to see that actually they have found these links now. And actually there are very much a, a feeder line into the coal distribution network. Um, so actually it looks worth it now. Um, and, and this also highlights the importance to not just look at the power plants themselves, uh, but also to look at transmission and distribution where a lot of uh, support for fossil fuels can be hiding. Um, and there's also the intermediate finance, the financial intermediaries, as um, Vidya, you mentioned that we've been working on. So um, at the moment, I don't think we, we can see those links, but when we did the previous report, we found a financial intermediary that was supporting Summit Power in Bangladesh, um, giving them basically funding to pretty much do whatever they like to do. Uh, they pinpointed a certain number of, of projects and they were all gas or oil projects. And again, there was no renewable energy. Um, that project has now concluded, they sold the equity they had in Summit, um, but it still proves how important it is to also look at all these tentacles that the AIB can spread through and how it can really boost um, big corporations uh, like Summit, who certainly doesn't need more boosting rather than um, going towards renewable energy. Um, so. I won't go much more into the report, but I just wanted to mention, as others have pointed out, that it's so important that this report comes now and further builds the case why, on terms of what AIB does. So the annual meetings is coming up. The board is meeting today and also next week um, in advance of the annual meeting. Um, and then the energy sector strategy, like Ryan mentioned earlier. I think this report will really prove vital evidence into that, that um, review. Um, for those who are not familiar with the current energy sector strategy, it actually doesn't include exclude any type of fossil fuel, not even coal. It leaves the door open for, for all fossil fuels. Um, and I think Bangladesh is a case in point why this is so problematic, because um, despite ARB keep saying that they're green and they, you know, trying to align with the Paris Agreement. When you look at Bangladesh as a climate vulnerable country, it's very clear that that's not happening. And the energy sector strategy is not telling AIB to go down that pathway either. So that's why it's so problematic. Um, and, and gas is a case in point here, where a lot of investments have gone into gas in Bangladesh. And AIB claims that that's a, a transition fuel. Um, but to us, as in our previous report was called dangerous distractions, that's what we call gas, it's a dangerous distraction. And in fact, more and more evidence points to the fact that gas is highly problematic. The, even the International Energy Agency has now come out to say that we really do not need and should not put more funding towards gas. Uh, the planet simply can't afford it. Um, the growth from greenhouse gas emissions is, is partly or largely driven by gas at this point. Um, so all of this must change, and this is something we need to challenge as we go into the energy sector strategy review. 
Um, and this is important for shareholders as well, just to quickly wrap up so we have some time for question as well. Um, so sitting in the UK and as Urgoval in Europe, it's important to note that shareholders don't just sit in Asia, they actually sit in, in Europe as well. And Europe actually have a very strong say within the AIB um, and if they use that space properly they can change things and they should change things and they all also or most of them have committed to quite high standards in terms of fossil fuels so the UK for example this year has committed to not support uh, fossil fuels oversee any longer. And that includes through multilateral development banks such as the AIB. So we really need to hold them to account for that and make sure that they take the responsibility as shareholders. And um, so I'll finish on that. And again, really thanks to everyone who worked really hard for that. And we're very, very honored to be part of that collaboration um, and really look forward to working with, with you all, all our partners and also everyone who's joined today to, to really, challenge the AIB to, to do better. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, we all need to collectively challenge the AIIB to do much, much better. Uh, we know they, uh, I mean, as, um, sorry, I was going to say Kate, but as Petra said just now, um, Bangladesh is the president of the Climate Vulnerable Forum. They have a target to achieve um, hundred percent renewable energy by 2050. Um, and, and so AIFB, if it wants to continue to be in Bangladesh, really needs to shape up and, uh, and, and align with the Paris Agreement. Um, AIIB loans are really uh, coming down hard on the people of Bangladesh. The debt situation is getting worse. This is the time for questions. We have um, clean, NGO Forum, uh, we have uh, Orgewald and Recourse together with the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt here to answer questions. Amra Sheshed Dike Jatshi, our Akhun Jodi Kuno questions, Lashe, this is the time to ask. You can uh, raise a hand and I can call you to ask your questions. You can type in the chat. If it's Bengali, I can try to read. If it is not in Bengali, um, then I think I can read. If it's in Bengali, Hassan Mahdi can read. Bito, hello, Bangla Bojhi. Bojhi, ikto ikto pori yo, kintu. <laughs> Any questions? We are still open. Do any of our uh, presenters until now want to say something to add on to what has been said before, what has been left unsaid? I think the demands that Mehdi presented, which are also part of the report, were very clear. If there are any um, points to make about that. There's a question coming. Charlotte, do you want to um, ask this straight out? Or do you want me to read it out? Uh, if you like, I can ask myself, that's fine. <laughs> yes, can you, yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I was wondering because um, China or uh, Xi Jinping recently announced that he was not going to invest in um, coal or fossil fuels in general, I'm not sure, overseas anymore. Has that changed? Anything in Bangladesh? So early days still, but um, no. what is the response? Nora, do you want to um, respond to this? I think Nora is not here because- Oh, uh, the woods have eaten her up. <laughs> Maybe do you want to respond? Uh, well, yes, okay. Uh, hmm. So 
uh, when uh, the Chinese president declared that uh, they are not going to finance, uh, build any more uh, coal power plants uh, in overseas, uh, following him, the uh, Chinese envoy in Bangladesh uh, declared that they are not going to finance uh, any more coal power plants in Bangladesh. <clears throat> but uh, it is, and after that, there is no new decision came out, but it is unclear that uh, whether they will finance the power plants which are already under agreement, like uh, Chinese uh, company Power China uh, agreed with uh, GCM resources in Lo London based GCM resources to build 6,000 megawatt power plant in Fullbody coal mine, which is another controversial coal mine and took a, a life of six people in 2006. Uh, so it is not clear. And uh, another thing is there are several uh, under construction power plants, like at least two under construction power plants, which is just, uh, you know, they developed the land only till now. So uh, they signed the agreement uh, of, you know, financing uh, with Chinese Exim Bank, but it is not clear that uh, whether they are going to continue or not. So uh, nothing changed after that declaration. Yeah. So plenty of ambiguity all around. Does anyone else want to respond to this? You're welcome, Charlotte. Um, Aminul Haq, a question from you, perhaps? No, oh, no, 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 thank you. No. Arati? There's no problem. We'll translate for our international uh, speakers. Two of our speakers can answer in Bengali also. Maybe, Mehdi, we are, everyone needs to read the 50 page report before throwing more questions at us. Any uh, last one minute uh, interventions from anyone, including our speakers? Kate? I think Kate should say something because yes. Kate went through the report uh, very rigorously and uh, and uh, you know, edited edited it you know cruelly and also uh, helped us a lot. <laughs> Don't say cruelly. <laughs> yeah, but but cruelly in positive she was, sense. She yeah. was cruel to be kind. Yeah. Yes, Kate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I apologize for my cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> it is very welcome. He has told me so. <laughs> No, it was uh, it was a real pleasure actually to edit this report. It's so comprehensive, and you know the data, just the um, the amount of data that was condensed into making a really clear case about what AIB is actually prioritizing in Bangladesh. I think really, you know, for me, uh, reading and editing the report. It, it very simply comes down to seeing what AIB is doing in Bangladesh. It is utterly prioritizing the powerful, the elite, the fossil fuel um, model, and is not in any way helping Bangladesh adapt to uh, the massive climate change impacts that will come. And to me, that is so basic and so shocking but what's great is the report just provides forensic evidence to make that case. Um, and I think now um, it would be great to discuss with you and you know, to hear from all of you who've been involved in this report, um, what we do next, how do we use this report to really make change um, at the AIB? Um, you know, we have opportunities coming up, on Monday, we're meeting all European shareholders who have like 23% of, of shares in the bank. Um, their own 
fossil fuel policies say they're not allowed to be financing fossils, but here's direct evidence that they are doing that. Um, we've got COP coming up um, and need to publicize this as much as possible. There's the MDB Working Group on Paris Alignment. This is not Paris Alignment. We have a very clear case here. So um, from, from my side, I would just love to hear more, both how the report and its findings can be used in Bangladesh to affect change, but also what we can do to really support um, best uh, the advocacy around this report so that AIB just doesn't get away with this anymore. Thank you. you. I can point um, and, uh, and the point looking forward. Uh, Mehdi or anyone else also from the Bangladesh Working Group, I think um, if you would put forth your ideas based on Kate's expectations of what is in store. Uh, would you please uh, ask again? Connection is very, you know, bad connection here. Acha, Ami ji ke so Kate bollo ki akhon report ta ishte next week or day. Um, there um, and uh, especially Amar shunte pachhu na na acha. Our bolche ki um akhon there of course the AIB annual meeting is there, but for um, Age, uh, it is the European, um, uh, you know, uh, the re European constituency in the uh, AIIB is 23%. There are meetings with these people, with the finance ministers lined up. So, um, and also there's talk. How do you intend to push at the AIIB and um, the various groups that have taken the AIIB in the coming uh, few weeks? How do you propose to use the report? Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, and there are our, our colleagues are here from Bangladesh Working Group. Uh, I want to also uh, inform them uh, to be uh, in line with all of us. Uh, one is uh, we have meetings with European uh, constituency in future. And I think next week uh, we'll we'll raise the issues there. And then uh, there are COP in multilateral uh, uh, MDB uh, working group on Paris Agreement is there. So uh, we, we would like to touch with, like to meet with, meet them also. Uh, uh, but, but the important thing now is, uh, you know, uh, Urge World uh, reports and NGO from an MDB can help us uh, by circulating this report, uh, uh, you know, uploading it on the website and circulating in, in the in the uh, broader communities, uh, we uh, will try to send it to uh, AIB officials which, who are known to us and also to our members, our uh, colleagues and uh, everywhere. And I think uh, during the AIB annual meeting, uh, we'll raise the issues uh, in appropriate uh, uh, platforms uh, like if we meet the people with environmental, we'll raise the issues related to environment uh, as example. Yeah, that is the primarily idea now uh, we are thinking about. Great, so Clean and Bangladesh Working Group leading and um, yes, all international support is very much elicited. Um, thank you, Kate, for pushing us in the right direction. And yes, we know that you are happy and very willing to support in all of this, thank you. Um, any more questions? If not, since we have a clear path ahead and we have a good report to see that the path ahead is very short and straight, um, asking those tough questions of AIIB, I'll ask Gaurango Nandi to please um, sort of uh, wrap up and say some final words on behalf so of the and Bangladesh Working Group. Yes, Gaurav Dutta. Yeah. Oh, it's a very tough job to wrap up. Huh? Uh, where the president said here, the, uh, a, a, a serious and good and attractive uh, moderator like Vidya Dinka, then it's a very... Uh, uh, so, 
Buddha Pedonol, uh, we the people who are here, uh, we have heard the, with the presentation, with the presented by the Hassan Mahdi on behalf of Clean and BWGED. Uh, we have seen the, how AIIB is marching, emerging in our country, Bangladesh. Actually, we the people, uh, uh, we know the ADB, World Bank, IMF, like the, the um, uh, financial body who are inject our economy and promoting Arch, like like some bondings. Now AIIB is another um, uh, what can I say? Uh, 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 another uh, bull like bull. He comes and to boost our economy in the name of environment and clean uh, economy, but without any green energy mechanism. They are deposited the money, they are investing the money uh, in power sector, which is the fossil fuel based, not the green uh, or the um, plain, uh, uh, all the, Dirty, uh, um, dirty energy sector. But very fantastic is the China recently announcement uh, announced the Charlie uh, raised the questions already. The, um, uh, China recently announced that they are not investing the coal financing in the other countries. But in our country and other ways, uh, what will be the policy? They are not clear about that nothing. And not only that, uh, one thing is very interesting. Like you, the people all are very enjoying that. When um, uh, towards the COP26, all the people are committing to go against the um, um, declaration, declare them themselves not to uh, invest coal financing, then coal itself is a burning and uh, burning issues that in, in, in India, in China, uh, all people are trying to coal, 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 because they are not getting any electricity without coal. I, I, I just wondering, is it a, is it a plan they are playing like that? They, uh, now it is not actually not possible to come back uh, without or going to the, without coal, uh, we cannot running or passing our day. Uh, if the leadership are want to prove it, I, I am very much confusing. I don't know, Joe, uh, you the people uh, who you are working on this field, uh, what's your feelings? But my, just my feelings is like that. Maybe world politician or world leaderships, they are making a big joke with us. Uh, they are crying, they are saying, they, we are. Uh, going, we are trying to go, we are trying to pull out the, from the coal investing, but they are again and again coming and searching the solution the, with the coal. Uh, but in our discussion, the students' discussion is the very fantastic and the president and like Mehdi was the directions or the second phase and what is his plan to do this part. I think all of us, all of we, the follow 
and try to implement and try to uh, try to uh, to force try to shout that try to uh, while leadership in all leadership also please please stop the poor financing and come back the renewable energy because there is a opportunity there is a if you make any uh, junction if you many any any uh, try to travel it's not that because there is a possibility there is a scope to go over the clean energy or to the fossil or dirty energy it, it, it is possible it is possible to uh, pass out or to go out or pull out the dirty energy uh, i said to thank you all of you again participate here join here being with us and maybe we will uh, and hopefully all of you um, join hand in our activities and we shall try and we will uh, always try our same and uh, we will always the shout against the coal that is energy demanding the clean energy thank you thank you bidda thank you. and thank you all the participants thank you uh, goranga da and i think uh, goranga has has really reminded us what uh, petra told us some time back because it is really our bangladeshi fighter who has taken on the aiib first and uh, really strengthened the kind of international solidarity against what the bank is doing uh, they are also pointing out to us again that despite the huge amount of investment in the energy sector in bangladesh that none of it has gone into the renewable sector and this itself is uh, rather damning uh, our report is a damning piece of evidence against the bank and we should be uh, very effective thank you for uh, for really shining the path and um, shobai to uh, sathapun shakar kuthapun and uh, i'll say bye bye and uh, we'll continue to push the aiib even more strongly with this new report um, uh, financing fossil fuels uh, failing our future Thank you all.